Hello, Big Trends Traders. This is Price Heedley with your Index Options Timer product review. As we get into it, just a reminder that everything I share with you here is for your information and education only. Nothing we talk about here should be considered a specific recommendation of buy or sell any particular investment. Of course, you know that you are 100% responsible for your own investment decisions. Big Trends and the staff are not responsible for any trades you choose to make. And not all Big Trends products or services are appropriate for all traders and investors. So always keep your risk level in mind. Big Trends does not provide personalized financial tax or legal advice to any individual. What we do is we take our index option time or research and we send it out in real time email and text alert to your smartphone. Then you decide how you want to implement it and do consult your tax advisor before you make any investment that might impact your unique tax situation. Now, bottom line is that everybody's telling me they'd like more consistency and more income. And so we're going to talk about how you can do that with index options on both the S&P 500 as well as a couple other vehicles that I like to trade as well, defining support and resistance with very easy automated uh, uh, auto-drawn lines in technical analysis. I'll also share with you my favorite intraday momentum filter. So uh, as we get into it, what are we talking about with this income strategy? It's called credit spreads. In, in fact, relatively short-term credit spreads of about a week to 10 days before expiration. The idea being that while most people say if you're bullish, you think you want to buy a call, we're flipping that upside down on its head and saying let's sell an out-of-the-money put and buy a cheaper put to protect ourselves. So if you had the underlying stock at 47, instead of buying a call where it has to go up, we're saying, you know what, if we sell a 45 put, in this example, buying a 40 put protects you from a worst case kind of crash scenario. Most of the spreads we do on the S&P are one point spreads, so it further limits that maximum risk. Bottom line is that uh, you know, you're really um, dramatically increasing the number of winning scenarios, thus your greater win rate is, equals greater consistency in your experience. So it can go up and you make money here. It can stay flat um, at 47. You make money on the green line there or it can even go down a little bit. You can see you're still pocketing your 200 bucks a contract uh, at 45 or higher at the options expiration. Since you got two bucks, you can see it makes your break even at expiration 43 bucks. And your worst case scenario is if it goes to 40 or less, you totally missed the boat. You thought it was bullish to neutral at 47, it goes to 40 or less, you're going to lose your maximum in this example of a few hundred dollars per, con per spread contract. So the idea is that don't want the stock or underlying index to move dramatically against you. So you're selling one put. We don't like naked puts by themselves. We would rather protect ourselves by buying another put to cap our worst case risk. That reduces the amount of money you have to put up with your broker is what's called margin to keep your kind of worst case risk scenario from getting too large. Uh, let's look at a couple of quick examples and we'll look at some more examples later. But basically in this first example here, uh, March 22nd, you can see actually we've gotten this little plunge in the S&P kind of to a new short-term low. These these light blue lines here are what we call Donchian channels. And you would think if it breaks that support, it would be bad. But actually, our system said that a one-day break of that support down here at the close the day before we got into this trade is actually a pretty good setup to bet that things are going to start to stabilize. So you can see it broke there on the 21st. And then on the right, we've got our favorite short-term uh, momentum filter. That's the stochastic coming back out of its oversold uh, territory. Now, this is interesting because at that point, the SPY was trading around 234 in this example. And we don't sell a 234 put. We give ourselves some wiggle room. We sold a 232 put. The one that's shown on the front end is a sell, and then the one behind it is the one we buy for, to protect ourselves as insurance. Okay, so sell first, the buy behind that. Selling a 232, buying a 231, and collecting 20 bucks a contract means we're risking 80 bucks a contract. And in this case, you can see it's a good thing that we sold the 232 because it went right down even just a hair under 232, but not far enough below to stop us out. Then it came rocketing back up and we're booking the profit, uh, you can see as it, as it rockets back up as of the 31st of March. Now, the following week on the 3rd of April, you can see what then saw, saw things hit the overbought area, hitting into the top resistance on that upper Donchian channel. And of course, as we came back down here, starting off the month of April, it turned out that was April 3rd after a, a, a weekend. Uh, bottom line is that now we're getting a signal that says we should expect things to actually head lower. Now you see in this case, that thing was happening just around 234 and a half. And bottom line is that uh, we are actually needing this wiggle room. You see the old highs here were about 236.50, 236.40. And we said, let's sell the 237s by the 238s. Again, it tested just above 237, but not far enough above to stop us out. Then it comes back down. 
we pocket that premium. So you can get tested with this, but if you give yourself that wiggle room, it'll give you a lot more staying power. Um, our system testing, again, based on um, a 20 year look back in this case for the spy showed wins on both the, the long or bullish side and on the short side. You would expect that it would work on the bullish side in an overall bullish market phase, but the short side did well too. Interestingly enough to me, look at how close the win rate was between the shorts and the longs across many hundreds of trades. Very consistent, 61%. There's no guarantee that's going to be the same in the future, but we like this kind of an equity curve where we see a lot of upside. But when I saw all these green dots show new equity highs. So when I saw this even flat period, I said, you know what? When I see those flat periods, that says even when we're losing a little bit on the SPY and it's hurting our win rate, if we just traded SPY as an underlying vehicle, we can win if we sell out of the money credit spreads on those choppy types of environments more often than not. And so this really puts the odds in your favor. Instead of having a 61% rate, if you just trade SPY, we can really have a dramatically higher win rate if we flip it into selling credit spreads and giving ourselves a wiggle room. Usually we try to go about one and a half deviations out, which is in between these first two deviations here, about the 80% range. We're looking to set it up where we can win about 80% of the time with these trades. There's no guarantees it'll always be at that number. Sometimes it can be less or more over a given look back period, but we're trying to set that up where about one and a half deviations should work out around the 80% level. Why not go out to 95% coverage? Because then you don't get enough premium to cover your costs. So it's very important that you're getting enough bang for your buck with this. That's what we do things this way. Uh, the whole idea of time, you know, the phrase time is money. It's definitely money when you're talking about selling time value in the final week or week and a half before expiration. I will show you a chart on that next, but option time is not linear. The closer you get to expiration, the faster that time decay curve will accelerate. So when you look back, say, over 120 days before expiration, if you're just looking at, say, an out-of-the-money option or an at-the-money option, it's all time premium. The bottom line is that, you know, say you had four bucks of time premium with four months to go, you think, okay, well, then I get a buck a month. It doesn't work that way. You can see that actually with 30 days left, you might still have two-thirds of your option value. Maybe it's trading around two and a half. You say, okay, why don't I just sell a 30-day option spread and get the bulk of that benefit? Well, I can take it even further and say, you know, with about 10 days to go, you're still probably getting at least a buck of that four bucks with 10 days or less. And so the idea here is that, you know what, in that last week, week and a half before expiration, we can really get a nice bang for our buck and actually pocket a whole lot more premium dollars. Say if it was a 10-day uh, option that we did, that'd be the equivalent of doing like 12 different trades over each 10 days to match the 120 day period. If I could get 12 $1 premiums, that would beat the $4 premium one time at 120 days by a factor of three. Uh, so, you know, yes, you're going to have a little bit more transaction costs, but I think you'll find it's still well worth it. What we do is when we get a new trade like this, um, this is from a prior example, but we'd say uh, sell to open the spy, uh, whatever strike in this case put so where we're neutral to bullish and we're because we're then buying the further out to 10 put to protect it for a net credit of 20 bucks a contract or better. So uh, that's very important that then you set it up where you see you've got a good chance of catching the market stabilizing and potentially even reversing. So even you can see here after uh, the presidential election where the market roared up, we got a, a sell signal um, to basically bet that the market should go flat to lower over the next week. And we sold a 222 call, bought a 223 call to protect ourselves. So we got the 20 bucks a contract. You can see a week later it was back. It never even got through 222. So we never had a problem there as we took our profit right as it pipped pop back down here. At that point, now we're coming down off of the lower end of the support line on the Donchian channels, getting ready to head up. And in this case, you can see we get the same 20 bucks a contract. Again, on a typical, say, 1,000 bucks risk, we'd be collecting in the neighborhood of about 12 contracts, would be about 240 bucks before commission. So um, you see, then we booked the profit just a couple days later. Yes, it could have been a bigger profit. Um, if it kept on running, but we don't want to take that risk right into resistance. We're trying to just use that support and resistance filter accordingly. We show you some more examples in a minute, but essentially we started with a spy focus, but actually we've added in a couple other vehicles I want to show you here with the bond market and with the small cap stocks as well. We use our technical analysis both on the bigger picture daily charts, Donchians, as well as the intraday stochastic to really adjust to market volatility and turns and then a holding time on average of about six days. So that we're going to where we're going to have multiple opportunities throughout a month. Now, with the bond market, it's a TLT, a 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. And here's an example of the short term stochastics 
We see we're coming out of that oversold range. So you're getting a buy signal right there. And you see that one goes straight up uh, where we're actually taking a 21.8% gain the next day. Um, and, and you can see then it starts to come down. We're getting a sell signal right in here as it comes out of that overbought area. Right as again, it starts to crater down. Then we book it as it starts to actually come back up for yet another um, put credit spread after benefiting on the call credit spread over six trading days, 23 and a third percent and then 20 and a quarter percent three days later on that one. So real nice and steady back and forth. Sideways action on the longer term basis, but um, of course, lots of swings in between there. And so the basic strategy guidelines, like we said, about six calendar days, this allows us to have about an average of four trades a month, give or take sometimes three, sometimes five. We've added in the bond market and the Russell 2000 IWM to go with the S&P 500 uh, out of the money credit spreads. And then uh, also, uh, you, you you see the credit received, most of the time it's in the 25 to 30% range, but can be a little bit more or less depending on the market. As, as I said, with a one point credit spread, we'll be risking about 80 bucks a contract if we collect 20. Um, if we collect 25, we'd be risking 75 bucks a contract. So the, most of the time we're collecting around 20 bucks, risking 80. So we're looking around a 25% typical return. Now, uh, uh, if we if we go out at, at, uh, and the options expire at no value. In this case, you like the options on both sides to expire at no value because you don't have a commission to shut the trade down. They just get taken out of your account when they both expire uh, without any transaction costs on the back end. So that's kind of nice, too, when we can get that. Now, you can see in this case, the Russell 2000, incredibly back and forth, but you can see we're coming out of the overbought range here. So we're getting a signal to say you should bet on uh, the Russell going down here. Now, interestingly, see how it tested back to the old highs um, here around 154? And we had given ourselves even more breathing room up to the 156 strike because you can see as it popped up here just above 155, uh, as news of the uh, tax plan hit uh, and, and, and basically the market initially gapped up and then gave it all back. And so all that sideways chop, even when it was slightly against us, we still had the staying power to not get stopped out and to ultimately end up taking a 25% gain seven days later. So, so when we get the questions about, so how does index option timer work? How do you get started? What's the recommended account size? You can start with less than 10,000, but we have a lot of people that start around there, but you can't do it with less. We just would say, don't commit too much capital on any one trade. How much capital should you allocate for each trade? We tend to recommend between 5 to 10% of the capital that you're trading in the service going into any new trade. As we said, this is an options selling strategy, but we're buying another option to hedge ourselves and protect ourselves. But that will still require you have a margin account. So check with your options broker to make sure you're enabled to do this, or we can help you with that. Call our 800 Big Trends line in the bottom left. We can walk you through some of those uh, logistical details to help you get set up. Like we said, about a trade a week, uh, every week to 10 days on average, uh, sometimes more. Uh, but the, if we're getting the market swinging in each direction, we can get both a bull and a bear one on, on the SPY or on other, other vehicles if uh, if you get enough action during a week. Um, the average holding period, like we said, six calendar days. How many open positions? Typically one, sometimes two per vehicle. But then uh, we might have multiple vehicles, so we might have actually even three trades open at a time across the three major vehicles with the SPY, the Russell, and the bond market. Or do we issue exit alerts? Absolutely, every time, so you know exactly how we manage accordingly. And then I give you a weekly video training, so I don't just give you a black box system. I show you exactly what I'm doing with the settings and how you can follow along at home uh, to know exactly how you can be watching these trades for the next opportunities across these big ETFs. We'll call out real-time trade alerts, though, to you and, and help you to really benefit from our extra sets of eyes that are on it all day, every day. So to get more information on how to get started with Index Options Timer, uh, just uh, go to uh, our 800 Big Trends toll-free number, 800-244-8736. You can drop us an email anytime through clientcare at bigtrends.com or check out our website, bigtrends.com, for the Index Option Timer uh, uh, specials to get you started there, too. So I hope you enjoyed this product review, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Trade well.